So today, as a second video, we're going to talk about rules for balancing chemical equations. You can title it if you want to, rules for balancing chemical equations or just rules to balance. I don't care how you do it. Um, but there are six steps you need to go through in about the same fashion every time or your equations won't balance. It's still going to be a trial and error method, but if you follow these steps, it will help. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is to identify reactants and products. Whoops. So you're gonna identify reactants and products and you're gonna write a word equation. Remember EQN stands for equation. This is only going to have to be done if you're working with a word problem, if, if the chemical reaction is buried within a sentence. For instance, when you um, turn your stove on in the kitchen and you ignite the gas, the natural gas is methane, CH4. The methane reacts with oxygen to provide carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Okay, so you'd have to pull methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water out as what's going on, write a word equation for that, okay? So that isn't gonna happen very often. Uh, the second thing you're going to have to do is translate a word equation to a formula equation. Okay. Um, Lots of times in class, we'll just start with a formula equation. As we talked about earlier, formula equations give you a lot more information and you can work with them easily. But in your homework, on the test, occasionally on a worksheet, you're gonna get a word equation, you're gonna to have to use your nomenclature skills, and you're gonna to have to translate this to a formula equation. If you make a mistake going from here to here and you get the wrong <clears throat> formulas, uh, things go bad quickly. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, assuming we have a correct formula equation, you're going to balance elements that appear, whoops, appear once on each side first. Um, in that last example I gave you, um, I'll just put it down here at the bottom, CH4 plus O2 gives you CO2 and water. Can we look at that for a sec? Okay, O2 appears once on this side and it appears in two products on that side. We wouldn't mess with the O2. We'd start with C, which appears in one reactant and one product, and we'd start with H, which appears in one reactant and one product. So that's what this means, balancing elements that appear once on each side. Um, next, you're going to balance polyatomic ions as a group. Whoops. P-O-L-Y atomic. I can do this. Okay. If you see... SO4, like in BASO4. Don't break this up. This is not one barium, one sulfur, four oxygens. You're going to treat this as a single group. All right, this makes it a lot easier. So if you see SO4 in the reactants and the products, just count it as X. You've got one of them, you've got two of them, balance them like that. Um, last thing, no, not quite the last thing, sorry. Balance elements that appear twice on the side. Okay, balance elements that appear more than once on a side. So if we go back down to this equation I wrote earlier, this is where you deal with oxygen. 
okay? Because it's appearing twice on the product side. Um, and the very last thing you do is you finish balancing with hydrogen and oxygen. Um, they may already be balanced at that point. In my example, there wasn't much besides hydrogen and oxygen, so you had to do it in the beginning. But occasionally, these guys will be balanced by the time you're done doing other things. So up here, you're going to do want to do metals, um, non-metals like sulfur, uh, things like carbon, but leave these to last. Um, okay, we'll do some of these after you take a look at this. If you have any questions, write the questions down and we'll handle it in class. Thanks. See you in a bit.